Hello everyone. In this video, we have another interesting geometry question. Okay, so in the given picture, as you can see, we have a cyclic quadrilateral. So, what is a cyclic quadrilateral? A cyclic quadrilateral is basically a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure whose four vertices or four corners are on a circle. It's like we are fitting a quadrilateral exactly inside a circle. So, here in this cyclic quadrilateral. Three sides are given. Three of the sides A, B, B, C, and C, D are given. We have to find the fourth side, and one angle also is given. That is angle B. Okay. So how can we solve for this uh, unknown length A D over here? Okay. So you can also give it a try, and uh, after that you can come and watch the solution. Okay. So when it comes to cyclic quadrilaterals, there is a unique property, an interesting property. and that property some of you must be knowing that is in a cyclic quadrilateral the opposite angles are supplementary which means the sum of any two opposite angles will also always be 180 degree that is if i take this angle b and angle d right these two are opposite angles so their sum must be 180 so we can easily find out what is angle d from this so we know that angle b plus angle d is equal to 180 right so which means angle d is 180 minus the angle b which is minus angle 60 degree so angle d will be 120 degree so this angle i can say that it is equal to 120 degree now we are looking for the side lengths not the angles okay but we will need those angles so to solve this question we need a uh, one of the most famous uh, geometry rules that is called as law of cosines we are going to use that rule so what is that law of cosines let me just briefly discuss about that so law of cosines it is a, a rule which is related to triangles basically so if you let us say if you have a triangle here if i have a triangle let me name it as abc and uh, let me name the side opposite to a as uh, a and side opposite to b as b and side opposite to c as c okay so that's what i'm doing now law of cosines says that you can start with any side basically here let me start with side a okay so law of cosines says that square of a that is a square is equal to b square plus c square minus 2bc into the cos of the angle which is opposite to a okay so that is nothing but angle a so cos of angle that's what we are going to use here okay so this relation gives us a, 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 a basic relationship between the sides and one particular angle of the triangle okay now where are where are triangles in the picture we have a quadrilateral right so first of all we need to create the triangles so for that i am going to join the diagonal that is i am going to join this a and c and create a diagonal over here okay so ac is a diagonal let me name the length of ac as a okay i'm just giving the length as a random variable now i will take triangle abc first i will start with triangle abc i will take triangle a b c and apply law of cosines so i will take this side a okay i will start from side a and i will apply the law of cosines so i can say that a square is equal to what is b square so that is nothing but 2 right so 2 square plus c square is 5 square 2 square plus 5 square minus 2 into bc will be 2 into 2 into 5 into cos of the angle which is opposite to the side length a that is nothing but 60 degree right so 60 degree is opposite to a so it is it is cos of 60 degree cos of 60 now here we get a square is equal to 2 square is 4 plus 5 square is 25 Minus two into two is four. Four into five is twenty. And you must be knowing cos of sixty degree, right? It's a well-known value. It is half, right? Cos sixty degrees. Now here, what do we get? Four plus five, twenty-five uh, is twenty-nine. And twenty times half will be ten. So we get nineteen here, which means we get a square is equal to nineteen. Let me keep it as it is. Okay, I will not go to find a. Okay, why you will know uh, later on. Now I will take triangle ADC. I am going to take triangle ADC here, and do the same thing. Apply the law of cosines, taking the same side length A, starting with the side length A. That is A square is equal to. But now I am talking uh, in terms of triangle ADC. Okay, so you have to uh, uh, take these sides X and three, right? These sides should be taken. 
okay be careful about that so we can say that a square is equal to x square plus 3 square minus 2 into x into 3 into cos of the angle which is opposite to a so that is nothing but 120 right so now we know that why angle are useful here so that's the reason why we found out the angle d in the beginning itself so cos 120 d okay now here we have a square is equal to uh, okay so actually we have the value of a square right see we found out the value of a square already so this is the reason why i did not take the square root because we have the value a square we are interested in a square not a so a square i will directly write it as 19 here is equal to x square plus 3 square is 9 minus 2 into 3 is 6 6 into x is 6x what is cos 120 so let me tell you cos 120 is minus half and how do we get minus half so for those uh, who want to know i will explain it here so actually we have a trick to ob obtain the value of uh, uh, the angles of uh, trigonometric ratios uh, for a specific angle so i can use the graph over here okay i will use the graph of astc what is this astc so we can remember uh, it is uh, using the shortcut all students uh, take coffee okay you can use that shortcut so we can uh, use this graph to find out the value of cos 120 So here this is zero. This is ninety, right? Ninety degree. This is one eighty degree, and this is two seventy, and then three sixty. So we can keep on doing that. Okay. Now our angle of interest is one twenty. So one twenty. Where does it come? So first of all, I, I I must explain you what is the meaning of this ASTC here. Okay. So ASTC means A means all. Okay. Here S means sine, T means tan, C means cos. which means in the first quadrant all the trigonometric ratios are positive here in the second quadrant sin and its reciprocal cosecant they are positive in the third one tan and its reciprocal cot is positive in the fourth quadrant cos and its reciprocal secant is positive now we are interested in cos 120 so where does cos 120 come it comes in between 90 and 180 right it will come in the second quadrant isn't it it comes in the second quadrant where sin is positive and cos is not positive okay so here if you take cos 120 we can basically write this cos 120 as cos of 180 minus 60 right or maybe i'll not write it there i'll do it separately here see cos 120 can be written as cos of 180 Minus sixty. So, how do I visualize this? One eighty minus sixty. So we are here. When we say one eighty, we are here. Minus sixty means we are going back to the second quadrant, isn't it? One eighty minus sixty, going back to the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant, sine is positive. Okay, not cos. Cos will be negative over there. So which means we have a negative sine, negative cos of this particular value we have to take that is sixty degree. so it should be equal to minus half right cos 60 degrees half so cos 120 degrees minus half i hope all of you understood how we get the value right so these are elementary things that that we have learnt already now let us simplify this okay so we have got 19 is equal to x square plus 9 and uh, we can do it here 2 ones are and 2 uh, threes are 6 Minus into minus will become plus, right? We have two negative signs and plus three into x, right? We have x also. Let us bring this nineteen to the other side so that we get a quadratic equation which we can solve. Okay. Now, if I uh, write it here, x square plus three x plus nine. When nineteen comes to the other side, it will become minus nineteen is equal to zero. So we have x square plus three x. Plus 19 minus 19 will be minus 10 is equal to zero. Now we can solve this quadratic equation in many ways. So I will prefer factorization because it's short and sweet method. So what we can do is we can take this minus 10 and we want the factors of minus 10 which will add up to 3. So I can go for minus 5 and 2. But minus 5, if you if you add minus 5 plus 2, it will give you minus 3. So I should not take minus 5 and uh, 2. Instead, I can take 5 and minus 2. Because five minus two will give us three, isn't it? So we'll take these two factors. Now we will factorize. So x square, three x can be written as five x minus two x minus ten is equal to zero. 
now we will group this and group this and take out the common factor from the first group common factor is x so we have x plus 5 remaining from the second group minus 2 is common right so we, we have again x plus 5 is equal to 0 so here again we take x plus 5 as a common factor outside so we get x plus 5 what's remaining remaining is x minus 2 is equal to 0 now equate each factor to 0 if you equate x plus 5 to 0 you get a negative value x is equal to 5 uh, but x is the side length here isn't it side length of the quadrilateral so we not take this value. okay that's rejected if you equate x minus 2 to 0 we get the value of x as 2 right which means the value of the unknown here that is the value of the unknown side of this cyclic quadrilateral is 2. So I can say that this length, right, it is equal to 2. Okay, so that was an elegant solution, right? So I hope all of you enjoyed the video. See you in the next video. Take care.